you name it, somebody has tried it. There are countless ways to avoid the cross. We will do anything and everything to dodge, sidestep, hop over, or sneak around it. And that makes sense. The cross is violent. It's unfair. It's painful. It's tragic. It's demanding. Therefore, it throws us into a basic human fight or flight reflex to avoid it. We will avoid it any which way that we can. And there are countless ways. You name it, somebody has tried it. The people of Jerusalem on this day are no different. When faced with the cross, it's fight or flight. Peter fights. First, he fights against the very idea of Jesus enduring this alone. He says he's willing to die with him. Then he fights against the temple slave who tries to arrest Jesus and take him away. Then he fights the consequences of being connected with Jesus, and he denies. The rest of Jesus' followers flee. First, they escape into sleep as Jesus is praying in the garden. Then they flee off into the night. One young man even runs off naked rather than be caught with him and arrested. Even the faithful women, who are more faithful and brave and bold by far than all the rest of his followers, they flee too in their own way. Yes, they watch from afar as he is crucified. But they want to protect him from this disgrace. They want to bury his body and cover up all this shame as soon as possible. Weirdly, even Jesus' adversaries fight against the cross. The high priest and Pilate, both of them, demand that Jesus make some sort of defense for himself. They know how bad this all looks, his claim to be a Messiah. They know how the Romans would prosecute and punish would-be rebels. And they try to force Jesus to say something, anything, to try and explain, justify, mitigate, or recant all that he has said and done. If Jesus just opens up his mouth, and says something, anything, to smooth all this over. They can just give him a beating and flog him and leave him on the outside of town. Simple as that. Fight or flight, there are constant ways, countless ways, to avoid the cross. You name it, and somebody has tried it. One tempting way that we try to avoid the cross is by explaining it away. To use our brains and immediately jump into theology and into atonement theories. To explain about how this all had to happen exactly this way because God's murderous wrath could only be satisfied by the violent sacrifice of God's only son. Well, frankly, I don't believe that's true. That's not how I read this story. That's not how I believe the God revealed to us in Jesus Christ is, is like. That's not what God's like. Or another explanation that we come up with is that Jesus is dying is the only way that he can show us how much God loves us and how much we should love one another. But honestly, that might be part of it, but it also seems to kind of beautify it and make it more beautiful, more graceful to avoid the pain of what's happening, the pain of this world, the pain of God. We always find ourselves in a rush to move on somehow, to clean up, clean up the crime scene, to bury the body, to say, it's Friday now, but Sunday's coming, instead of dwelling here with Jesus. And for 
just one moment really feeling and being aware that Sunday is not here yet. Sunday is not here yet for folks who struggle in the shadows, folks who struggle alone, folks who struggle with depression and anxiety, folks who struggle with burnout at their jobs, folks who struggle with addictions, folks who struggle with family strife, folks who struggle because if they revealed who they truly are to their family, They'd be rejected. Folks who struggle because they were told to be quiet and to be nice rather than risk speaking up about being hurt. When we try to skip over Friday, we skip, we skip over these folks too. When we avoid the cross, it's these folks and really a part of ourselves who ends up being crucified. However we fight or flee, at some point in our lives, we do come to the cross. And once we come to the cross, we realize there's no way around it. We can't just sail over it. We have to really feel how we're feeling. We have to really acknowledge the crosses we experience in our lives and the crosses that we inflict on others. We can't go around that cross. We have to go through it. And that's when we look up like the centurion did and see that the very Son of God went through it first. He didn't go around it or over it. He went through it and he comes now to go through it with us. Good Friday isn't about creating more pain and sadness in the world. We all know that there's more than enough of that already. It's about God's insistence that we all go there together to acknowledge and feel the pain that's there already together. So God can begin to heal it and redeem it, and turn it into new life. Yes, it's violent, but it's Jesus taking the violence into himself. It's painful and unfair, but it's Jesus taking the pain and unfairness into himself. Yes, it is tragic, but it is Jesus filling our tragedies with God's holy presence. God emptying God's self into the desolation and abandonment and tragedy of our lives. Yes, it's demanding. It demands our attention, our life, our worship, our discipleship, our love. It demands a devotion that we cannot possibly give, and yet that Jesus has already given for us, a devotion to us and to our salvation. And because Jesus has gone through it by our baptism, so have we. There are countless ways to avoid the cross. So thanks be to God that Jesus didn't. <laughs>